Welcome. So ladies and gentlemen, what I want to do for this video is show you how to um, evaluate our six trigonometric functions when given a point. And one thing that I, you know, mention again with all my students is, you know, when we're trying to evaluate our six trigonometric functions, we like when we have a point on the unit circle because the hypotenuse of that triangle is one. So, you know, sine is y, cosine is x, tangent is y over x, it's easy. But when we have a point that's not on the unit circle, we have to create a triangle. And there's special ways we need to make sure we create this triangle. So I'm going to go back over those again so we don't make sure, so we make sure we don't make the same mistakes. All right. So firstly, we have a coordinate point, right? And we know that. Coordinate point, x and y axis, y axis, x axis. So I go and plot the point. Negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 2, 1, 2. Okay? Now, so there's going to be our point. All right. So we're going to have a straight line from the origin to that point. Now, when we're creating our triangle, what we're going to do is we're always going to create our triangle with the x-axis. And our angle, I know this is a small triangle, our angle is always going to be what we call a central angle. Meaning our angle, um, and if you look at you know, the video talking about central angle, it's always going to be where our vertex is at the origin. all right, And we're always going to have our side that's going to be perpendicular to the x-axis. So this is going to be my triangle. And if you notice how I got to that point, well, I had to go to the left 5 and down 2 units. But to find my trigonometric functions, remember sine, cosine, tangent, uh, beside, except for tangent, sine and cosine, they both we need the value of the hypotenuse. So therefore, I need to go back and use my Pythagorean theorem to find the value of my hypotenuse. Well, remember, a squared and b squared, those just represent the two legs. And remember, the legs are going to be your two legs of triangle that create your 90 degree angle, where the hypotenuse is directly across your 90 degree angle. So therefore, I'll make a negative 2 and b negative 5. It doesn't really matter which one you want to do for which one, because it's not going to matter. But I'll just do it that way, that squared. So therefore, that's 4 plus 25 equals c squared. So I have 29 equals c squared. Square root, square root, c equals um, the square root of 29. It's not going to be plus or ne negative, because when we're talking about the hypotenuse, yes, the x and the y coordinates, those can be positive and those can be negative. But our hypotenuse is not going to have a direction attached to it. It's just going to be dealing with a certain magnitude, and that's it. It's just a, po it's just a distance. So now, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that I have these uh, three, three lengths of a triangle. So now I can evaluate all six of my trigonometric terms. Yay, right? All right, so let's do the basic ones that we first learned. Sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta. So remember, tan or sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side, remember, here's my central angle. All right, so here's going to be the opposite side. Here's my adjacent side. And here's my hypotenuse. All right, you got to remember that the opposite is always directly across from your theta, your angle. Your adjacent side is always between your angle and the 90 degree. And your hypotenuse, obviously, is always across. So we have opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be negative 2 over the square root of 29. I'm going to get to the rest of that later. Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be negative 5 over the square root of 29. And the tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent which is going to be equal to negative 2 over negative 5, which is just equal to 2 fifths. All right, now I said I'm going to come back to this later um, just because you know, it's the same process over and over, just different numbers. We don't want to leave our trigonometric functions with an irrational number in the denominator, hence a square root that we cannot, sim uh, we cannot simplify. So therefore, we're not even simplify, but actually find the, the evaluate. So therefore, I'm going to take the square root of 29 on the top and bottom. And this is what we call rationalizing the denominator. Because now you're making the denominator a rational number. So now, when I do that, I get negative 2 times square root of 29 all over 29. Square root of 29 times square root of 29 is this 29. Here, I have negative 5 times the square root of 29 all over 29. And then I'm just going to leave there as 2 fifths. All right, so I'll do green for the, for the in, or, la, 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 reciprocal functions. <coughs> So the reciprocal of sine is cosecant of theta. That equals the hypotenuse over opposite. And thankfully, we already did the rash lines of the denominator, because this will be nice and quick now. Now we just have the square root of 29 over the opposite side, which is negative 2. And we can't simplify anymore. The reciprocal of cosine is going to be secant of theta. So the secant of theta 
um, is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. And the hypotenuse, again, is square root of 29 over my adjacent, which is negative 5. And then I have the cotangent of theta, which is equal to uh, opposite over adjacent. So now it's going to be adjacent over opposite, which is going to be negative 5 over negative 2, which would be 5 halves. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you evaluate now all six trigonometric functions when given a point. Thanks.